I forgot we picked the song. <laughs> There's always a theme, right? <laughs> Just kick it. <laughs> That's right. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the escape. Just be yeah, Just kick it. Hit my music, right? <laughs> oh, oh. Here it comes. <laughs> oh, that's great. Sound down. Chat us up. Here we are. October 14th. Man, I say we just chill and mellow out and listen. 2021. We I just can't because it. this frustrates me so it. much. <laughs> um, but here we are. October 14th, episode 36. I feel like at episode like 35, like it's like you're still a young man. At 36, I feel like, oh, man, that's when the dad shoes get put on. The khakis. I got my slides with yeah. with with socks on right now. I'm tucking my belt. I'm tucking my belly into my belt. You know, <laughs> who's he, an athlete? 36, man. I'm drawing a uh, Chris Beelman at Ohio State, I guess. I, I mean, sure. I can't think of too many athletes that, that wore the 36. Stanford Jennings. Stanford Jennings. Stanford Jennings was number. Th- so that's one thing. Like, I'm not great at a lot of things. Yeah. I think that's one thing I'm great at is the number game. There's a great baseball movie with Kevin Costner for love of the game. Yeah. And and the guy says, I've seen where the guy's sitting at a bar, and he's like, Yankees, 1 through 99, I've got somebody. And he spieled them off. He started to anyway, and the girl was like, will you shut up? <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, that's how I remember phone numbers. It's like athletes. There's a lot of great Kevin Costner baseball movies. Yes. It's, that's – Kevin Costner in a baseball movie, if that was one guy you could keep it wins, keep in the same, like, Genre. keep him kind of in that 30 to even 50 range, yeah. that way you could put out more Kevin Costner ba- baseball movies, right? Yeah, that we, we talked about it in the past when we were talking about Queen of the South. Like, when you see somebody in a role, yeah, that you just got to adjust. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. if you yeah, see yeah. Kevin Costner outside of certain roles, it's like, like Waterworld or whatever, it's like, right. Like, go coach baseball, man. Yeah. Grab a bat and a ball and a glove. You're better. That's funny how many, that could be a a whole different topic is good actors, actresses, and then they get to a role where it's like, what were you thinking? (laughs) Yeah. You know. Have you ever done a movie you didn't like? (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. And and to get their perspective on it would be amazing. Yeah. Hilarious. So anyway, I'm Tom. That's Q. Tom and Q Show. Episode 36. Um... Episode 36, we got no wives here. No wives. No I wives. left the house this morning, just because, like, where are you headed? Kind of yeah. took a step back and said, Tom and Q show. Yeah. You ever watch it? Yeah. yeah. You come on. We talk <laughs> nursing. We talk all kinds of cool stuff. We we talk a lot about them. Tell your friends about it. Yes. Pass the word. Spread the word, right? I said, you might have heard of the Toby Suggs group. Yes. But you should check out the Tom and Q show as well. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> so... We've kind of, me and the older boys have kind of bachelorized it in the last few days as best we could, right? Oh, yeah. Nicole's camp started her camping excursion on, on Tuesday. Right. Right. And so, doesn't stop, you know, Carson having to go to work and go to school and Austin with football and, and everything and going to school. And, you know, I get to take those tasks on and Blake's got his soccer and everything like that. So, you know, staying busy, just... We're in two separate locations. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the house looks good. Yeah. Keeping it clean. I I came down here. I told you. I was like, I wasn't going to talk about this today, but we're (laughs) we're here, right? So we talk about our kids, and I don't know if it's different with girls and boys, and you can elaborate on it, but so anytime my 11, soon-to-be 12-year-old, anytime him and his friends get together, It is like this giant conspiracy (laughs) of where they're going to spend the night. How are they going to ask? Turn the couches around, build a clubhouse, get it sheet out. And it's every weekend. Yeah. Like if, if, you know, and we do, we do hang a lot. Most of our, most of the time we're hanging around Austin's friends and, and, and parents and buddies and everything. So it's always where are we staying? Yeah. Whose house are we staying? 100%. And then something, you know. All the kids are great. As soon as the kids flock together, you just look at the other parents like, whose house is it? Like, yeah. They're conspiring. Here they it's going to be one Here of they us. go. Yep. Right? And it's – so, mm. obviously, he had a buddy stay the night over, over the weekend. And I don't in, – in the summertime, kind of early fall, um, I usually don't come down here unless I'm watching football. Right. Right? Or if we have Golden Tea Night or something like that. Like, I, I don't – rarely do I come down here. 
um, at least to kind of sit and, and do something. So I, I come down here, and I, I'd seen it kind of throughout the week, and I don't know what they were doing, but there was cut-up construction paper. Like, I didn't know 12-year-olds <laughs> still did crafts when they had sleepovers. Um, but cut-up construction paper, there's, you know, the, the bar here was a, a mess of stuff. Paper. Yeah, right. And and so, like, here I'm down here. Like, I'm like, Quinn's going to be here. I'm, like, running the vacuum. I'm, I'm dusting. I'm cleaning every, you know, I'm cleaning everything up, which, you know, whatever. That is my job. I don't have a problem doing it. But, I, man, I was hustling. And you, sh- you showed up, and I'm, like, tr- I'm sweating. I'm literally, like, like I had just you ran. You just stand there. I'm like, everything this way, if it's good. Yes. We're good. It's, we're good. It's like it's, when we, when put we, it behind the. When we photo a house, right? It, it drives like, me bring crazy. Bring behind us, hold it in your hand, take the photo, and then go set it back down, right? <laughs> right. So as, right. as long as the viewer see that, like, that could be a mess. And it's not great. Great job. Everything's clean, organized, looks great. So It, it drives me crazy. <clears throat> yeah. So, anyway... Thank you for noticing. We're here. It's it is clean, um, sanitized, right? I thought it was when I when I knocked this morning when I got here. It's usually you, you come down and open the door for me. And this morning it was a text of "Come on in." Yeah, <laughs> so, bachelor pad is something well, different. Should... Like it's something that was slightly off <laughs> right. my, my, the norm. Well, and then I looked out and you didn't have your reg- your usual car. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, who just came in? And yeah. I yelled out, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, hey, is that you? <laughs> Some dude from Texas. Could have been anybody because I just said, hey, is that you, right? <laughs> right. So um, anyway, Nicole's not here. She's camping. Um, but she does have a, you know, a big night tonight. Okay? Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously we talked about it. She's running for North Central mm-hmm. School Board. Um, politics can be quite crazy, quite dirty. Yeah, it just su- sucks that politics crosses over into education. It's, yeah. It's, it's, you know, I yeah. heard it best when they're indoctrinating the kids, not educating the kids. Well, and it's like, ooh. And then you have the you have the law or whatever that was passed or they're trying to pass to where, you know, they want to be, if somebody comes in and voices their opinion at a school board meeting, they want to be able to arrest them yes. under, the, under the Patriot Act, right? Yes. And so... Um, you know, which I'm sure, you know, if she wins and she's on the board, she'll, you know, hope is everybody, everybody's happy, right? Yeah. You know, but chances are they're not going to be. So kind of get a front end look at how some of that plays out, right? That, that's, um, yeah. And we've seen some of that here, yes. right? And it's, and some of it are people that we know and they're, they're really good people, but they go to these places and, and they want to voice their opinion the way that you're supposed, the way that you're supposed to. Now, I'm not talking about whether it's, crude rude whatever i'm just saying you're sure that you, as yes. a public event you are the reason it's public and the reason they have to basically announce the date and time of these meetings is so that people can attend right so you know you know it's crazy and and, and just to kind of to stay there for a minute but let's just think of like <clears throat> the people that get shut down on ideas yeah just think of of electricity if somebody's sitting in a room like, hey, guys, we can channel this electricity, we can bottle it, we can capture it, we can create it on our own, and we can create a freaking light bulb. Will you shut up and leave the room, you idiot? Right. Like, once upon a time, that guy would have been shut down and quieted because his idea was so... Ex- the telephone. Yeah. What if we can communicate through the air? Will you shut up and go away? Somebody put this guy in a, a, in a loony bin, right? Yeah. Like, what, what if we continue to shut down ideas over and over and over and over? And if we go back in time, we don't have telephones, we don't have radios, we don't have a television. Like, if you could bring back one of the founding fathers today and just let them set in the world today, they would think it was sorcery. Well, what's funny, <clears throat> Alexa, play the Jetsons theme song. But yeah, yeah. But all of those are from ideas, and we've talked about it before. And, you, you know, I think it's where we... Alexa, play the Jetsons. Alexa, play the Jetsons theme song. Let's see if she works it. Jetsons theme song by TV theme band. There we go. So, yeah, I think the, the point is that they would think it was sorcery, like to see a television moving, talking. To it. How do you make a photo do that? It's well, what's like, funny about that, and that's why I played this, <laughs> as I sneeze, it's not COVID, I promise. Um, you, we grew up, and I was thinking about this this week too. Like, before we went to school, 
a lot of times you'd have a pop tart or whatever it was you ate for breakfast cereal. Yep. And you could watch cartoons, or when you were done eating, wherever you go watch cartoons until it was time to go to the bus or walk to school. That doesn't exist anymore, right? Right. But when we were growing up, you had cartoons like the Jetsons and the Flintstones. And Jim and the holograms. Yeah, Jim. She was truly <laughs> outrageous, by the way. You can't get that. You can't get that one back. Little earring. So thanks, Jake. Um, <laughs> so, but you watched the Flintstones, right? And they were very similar in terms of who made them, right? Hanna Barbera. Remember, Kings Island had Hanna Barbera Land. It was like the coolest thing ever. One hundred percent. And so, but there was two different perspectives. Yeah. Right? You had the Flintstones perspective where they had very simple tools, yep. right? And, and dinosaurs and all and all this other stuff. And then you had the Jetsons who were spacely sprockets. They made the sprockets. And they That's would interesting. they would they had teleconferences that were just buzz in right on their right. right on their TV, right? Similar to Zoom. And remember it's like in the year two thousand we're gonna have flying cars because the Jetsons have flying cars. Yeah. Well we have self driving cars now. Right. right and zoom meetings and these facebook lives where we can we can interact and we can do all of those things it was like the jetsons were sorcery yeah yes like yes. that was 19 <clears throat> late 60s 70s mm-hmm. and like not all of that has come true right a lot of it has though but i mean the, the take out the flying cars but everything else the is pretty idea much, yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. right the ideal and and you were talking about the founding father so i watched a show and, and the show's not i don't know i'm a history buff mm-hmm. so the show's not if you take it for what it is it's 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 an easy watch it's it's fun right um but it's not a great show you know <laughs> sure um it was on it was on nbc and gosh, I can't think of I, this. How good it was! I can't think of the name of it off the off the top of my head. Um, but it was based in real time, and they had a time machine, and they would go back. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Similar, but it was like they you had a bad guy, right? The anta- antagonist yep. who was trying who would go back in time to try to change world events, Ooh. and then you had the protagonist the you like those words right those yeah. are, thank you miss Cahi and mrs ford's english <laughs> class for teaching me those what they mean but they would go back in time and try to stop the people that are trying to stop it so regardless yes. of what it was whether it was you know i mean goodness who doesn't want who does, didn't want who wanted abe lincoln to get shot in in ford's theater right right and so they were trying to stop the assassination attempt of abe lincoln well meanwhile these good guys not knowing what would happen yes you know as you have your series of events that take place whether it's something good or something bad they had to let the assassination of abraham lincoln go yeah that's that's interesting perspective but like to your point it was like the forefathers if you took them like bill and ted's excellent adventure right and move them where we are today yeah man on multiple fronts, not just technology, but like, let's let's get um, Thomas Jefferson in a room. Let's get George Washington. You know, it, get them. John Adams. Those you, those people that started could the. Could you def- imagine like Biden and Washington? You know, Lincoln and and Trump and you know, just each end of the spectrum, right? Just John Adams and and and. Here's another one. Like uh, Obama, just let them sit down and talk to like why we designed what we designed yes. once upon a time yes. to where we're at today. Like well, the, it would just be like, are you kidding me? And the funny thing, because Washington said, do not have a two party system. It's, it's going to be terrible. Do you think he guessed that? Well, I don't know. I guess you could, you could look at it and say, okay, the country's been around for. But 200 and 246 years. So, like, and pretty much there's been a two-party system right. most of the time, right? If not all of it. That's kind of, you know, a little bit of history. I'm not perfect on it, so don't quote me on that. But, um, you know, just like you said, if you said, hey, put them in a room, and, and when, you're, when you're looking, history, right? So the job of history is to learn from the mistakes or the good things, right? So not just history, book history, but history in general, 
if I put my hand on a hot oven, right, I'm going to get burned. Yes. Right? My history tells me the next time, oh, don't do that. Correct. Right? Or if something maybe get a little bit more positive, right? You're 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 grilling a steak and you used the right seasoning and it was delicious. Yeah. Well, I mean, we need to do that again. Yes. Right? So you have good, you have bad. Well, revisionist history is like looking back, right? So it's like you're trying to interpret what the forefathers had met, right? And yeah. even in, even in yeah. a religious standpoint, Context, yep. you're 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 trying to interpret scriptures for scriptures the, the 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 time they were written to what they meant and and now society and that doesn't apply today and yeah yeah keep going. So, so it's like you look at it and it's like yeah could you get those people in a room like you have somebody that you know you have a pastor right and yeah and i, I my, this is strictly opinion like I, I could just see the people of the time saying stop putting words in my mouth that's not what i meant <laughs> right, <laughs> right then you're not even close and like I think this again. This is just solely my opinion. I think I think a good pastor, right? I think they use that more for. I, I think they would shy away from being so so, so interpretive of. Uh, I think this is what. Yeah. So the the church I go to out on the east side, and and and, and it's fam- phenomenal. So I met my pastor through my career. We got a great conversation. Conversation went next level. Um, so I left my church then and started going with him. And and it's so interesting the dynamic because he does not share personal testimony. Yeah. He doesn't grab a scripture and say, hey, the other day when I was driving my car, I ran into this and I thought of this scripture and and let me tell you about my end. Like that never, ever, ever happens. It's here's the scripture we're going to be studying today. Here's what we're going to talk about. And then it's if you open like a study Bible, it will actually have in, in the notes below references to that scripture. Yeah. And that's pretty much the the, the breakdown. It's, I'm going to pull this scripture out. We're going to talk about it today. And here's the supporting scriptures to keep this scripture in context of what it meant at the time and how it applies today. Right. So when we look at life, it's I'm using scripture to support scripture, not my road rage in a, in a, yeah. in a situation or not my, my kid's ball game or not my, you know, just everyday practical life scenario to where we can just hijack a scripture and, and force it to fit our narrative. It's like, no. Right. So it, it's, it's, <clears throat> you know, we think of like eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth and, you know, a lot of people look that at, in the context of, you know, if you poke my eye out, I get to poke your eye out. <laughs> and, but the context is really, if you poke my eye out, if I choose to retaliate, because Christ says to turn the other cheek, right? right? But if you poke my eye out, if I choose to retaliate, I can only poke your eye out. I can't poke two eyes out. I can't take more than what you took from me. Right. So it's an eye for an eye technically means e- uh, justice, equal justice, right? Right. So, you know, people interpret that different. So it's, I can use my own scenario to hijack that scripture, to put it into my context, or I could go through the book that it's in and say, well, what does this mean? I don't know. Let's use stuff from its time to support it. Oh, that's what I meant. Got it. So it's, a, <clears throat> it's, it's funny, you use the word narrative and you know you hear that thrown around a lot it is a lot lately I'm, I'm, I'm liking the word because I, 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 I just talked to you yesterday i said well i hear your approach but let's change the narrative and have right. a different perspective it always comes back to me. <laughs> you ought to just change the name of the show um <laughs> but uh you know you hear it nowadays when you're talking about politics and, and whose narrative and everybody hit what's the 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 word of opinions opinions are like assholes everybody's got one they yeah. all stink right yeah so i'm beginning to think interpretation is very similar to that yeah to that I, word. i've heard it's like the wrong pitch everybody's got two and they yeah. stink right so it's you have the same thing you have what's the difference between an opinion and an interpretation is there a difference Ooh. Uh, no i i ooh, no I, I mean i would have to look at the definitions and break them down but it, <clears throat> but my uh, opinion is formed through my lived experience, so that's the way I interpret it. Right. So. So your history, right? Your, yes. Your, you know your life experiences. Correct. And and when we go when we sat through school, um, you had a history class, 
right? Yep. Or, and it was, you know, all about timelines and things that happened. And it would, you know, when I got to college, I was actually going to be a history major and was going to try to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boy, that didn't work out. <laughs> um, you know, in the, the... But you're a teacher of life. You got Correct. kids. You got, right. Yes. Right. You're, yes. So write this down, right? Buddha. So <laughs> the my first history class, and I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a lot like... Um, a lot like your high school history, right? I went to a smaller, sure. smaller school, and you know, and it totally wasn't, and I wasn't prepared for this. You know, again, I'm 21 years old, 22 years old at the time. Right. Um, married. It's a Monday night. It sucked. It's like three hours on a Monday night, right? It's like six to nine. The guy was boring. You know, not just boring. I didn't really feel like he was all that nice of a guy either. Right. And so it was only one hour, but like we get there and like you get the book and. It was literally about, like, it wasn't about the timeline and what happened. It was always about, okay, what was the perspective of this person? It's like you're reading these excerpts of what they said and what they did, and it's like, I don't like that. That's not my type of history. I am a chronological person. I am, I am anal to the point of chronology. How about that word? Right. To where, you know, talking about the Bible, right? And the scriptures are, the way that it's laid out, you know, you pick a Bible. Alexa, play back in the day, Ahmad. You know, the, the way the Bible is laid out, it's all over the place. You, you know what I mean? Like, it, it is literally all over the place in terms of a chronological yes, yes, timeline. Yes, yes, so, so, yes, yes, 100%. So, so the, the first time that I read... This is actually probably the only book I've ever, like, I can say, I finished it, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, you had the Bible app, and there was a place, which is a great app. There's a place in that app for people like me that want the story, right? Like, yes. the lessons are good, but, like, for me being, like, a chronological, like, yes. they put it in chronological order. So it would go all the way from the very beginning of time in the Old Testament and then eventually you'd get to the New Testament and they, at least how their perspective, right? Their interpretation the volume down. of how and when this actually took place. Yes. And it helped me so much, right? And, and I don't know how we got on that, but we were start talking about uh, perspective. And, perspective yes. and chronological order and going back in time and bringing people forward. You know, I think the bottom line is, of that is interpretations and opinions are exactly pretty much yeah, exactly like people the same. speaking up at school boards and having an yes. opinion and yes. now they're getting shut down and, and getting arrested and it's it's like we're going to shut down ideas we're going to shut down creativity i, I heard it uh, 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 it's so funny because there's so many things that i've i've, I've kind of dove into this week you know mirror neuron and that goes to like when you see something it, it's uh, we'll talk about it later but um so kids at young ages when you talk about their creativity, it's like 90% of the kids between the ages of two and three are, 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 they think they're creative, right? And then when you get into grade school, it cuts to like 50%. And then when you get into college and out of it, the creativity, it's like, you, you hear people all the time, like, well, I'm not creative. Like when, when we're staging a house, well, I'm not creative. I'm not creative. We hear it so much from adults, but little kids, how creative are they to adults? And it's, it's like programmed into us to be robotic yeah. and to, to be these things. And and <clears throat> once we over censor things and shut down too many things, how are we gonna fix problems when we're not allowed to be creative? Right. Like that is the cure to fixing problems is, and, and we've talked about it before, I mean, there's people that I, you can't go beyond 100%, but I 1000% disagree with them. Yeah. But I appreciate them because that that disagreement keeps my thoughts from going too far. Right. And I think it's a perfect checks and balance from <clears throat> Marxism and and capitalism. Right. I'm glad they both exist because they're going to constantly play tug and war and when society's in the middle it's Marxism's not going to let uh, capitalism get the the well the the, um, the robber barons, right? Right. And then the robber barons will not allow Marxism to to turn into Venezuela or other third countries that which is what makes this country so great. <clears throat> yes, right. We need balance. And, and, and so, like, there's a lot of negativity out there, but people seem to forget that idea, right? And yeah. so, like, you know, backing up a little bit. So, Waycross TV. 
Okay, so they do. You've seen them. They've done like the local sports, like Forest Park, Winton Woods. Yep, 100%. Uh, Northwest, um, Coleraine. They've done. They do the local sports games, and you'll see them come across your your cable channel, and then they'll they'll have other stuff on there too. You know, whether it's uh, shows or concerts done by the local schools or in the local area. So they do a nice thing and and for they did the trustee one, the Corning Township trustee one where it's like it's a forum. I don't I don't I don't she's watched more of them than I have. She's watched well, a lot more considering I haven't watched them. Um, <laughs> but just in listening to, you know, kind of what what she has and is tonight is the one for Northwest Local School District to where right. I guess they sit up there and so we should all tune in to Wake Cross. Yeah, so it's on Facebook. In. Okay. Right. So it's it's on Facebook, uh, similar to kind of what we're doing right now. Can you share that link? Um, I'll find Later it. Later. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so log on, and people can I think call in and, and ask questions of the particular candidates. Potential spam. You ruin you ruin my bit. Potential spam. Um, <laughs> so she's doing that tonight. So it'll be a great time to kind of get. You want to know what people's views are it's a great time to see that right and, yep. and and so what's funny about that is you get nervous for your kids right and, and i always had this i don't know baseball is always really important to me still yep. is important to me and i used that experience that i've had there to move forward right so if there was and i always felt and this is gonna, again this is the how i operate because i'm a sports hog and playing baseball I never wanted to let my teammates down yeah you know and, and baseball is a funny game like that to where <clears throat> there's gonna be times where you succeed and everybody's happy there's gonna be times where you fail right and, and so you don't want to let your teammates down and so any time that I would come across whether it was in business or whatever I always reminded myself like man you had way harder at bats than this right like it like Ooh. this is this is not that's great terminology it, man i love that that's 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 an adoptable quote so it was uh, to me that's how i always i fall back on a lot on a lot of that like when times get tough man like that's exactly i've had right better i've had harder at bats than this and so you know we her and i were talking that's good this morning and she was really really nervous about this way cross form i'm like i don't know why you know your stuff yeah you've had harder at bats than this well and and that's she good. has so when her dad passed away and at the funeral like she had this like huge long like eulogy that she was gonna that she read right and, and completely there was 500 people in there and that's a tough at bat and correct and completely <laughs> knocked it out of the park and i looked at her i said this is nothing i am 100 percent embracing that thanks Th for that line this is nothing like when you got I up agree. there and you did that yeah that, that was something yes right and this this is gonna pass and you'll forget all about it yeah. when you're either on school board, win or lose. But this and, part? Yeah, and I'm probably stepping out of my, my, my bounds here. It's just kind of an outside knee-jerk observation of, of the character of her. Right. And, and she was probably capable of doing that because it was, it was true and close to her heart. And it was her, and it was just like releasing what her dad was to her right and it's it's very close and personal this i i could see the challenge because she affects others lives so how do i set up here and i have to be i didn't have to concern myself with how i love my father and telling you that but when i set up here and i'm thinking of other lives are in, impacted by this and cause and effect of of my belief system and the way that i think moving forward is the right way or wrong way it's like hold on you know, and then that, that, that self-doubt kicks in of, oh, man, am I making the right decision? Are my thoughts and feelings correct? Have, have I done my homework to make sure that the things that I put in motion are the right things for the kids? Because it's, it's more external now. So, again, I'm... I'm well, I think there, I, I can understand the nervousness. That would be, it's a different at bat. It is. It is. But if you're nervous about being on a channel or on a, a show and being in front of people that don't really know you. Yeah. Like you're way more out there doing that type of thing when people do know you. Right. In my opinion, than when they don't. Right. Right. And so, you know, if you, what was, what was, there was a saying I used and I've used it with my kids. I might've even made it up, but it was like, 
proper preparation, something along the lines of breeds su- success along the way, or whatever, right, right. you know. And so, it's but not, Bob Knight quote: "Many have the will to win, but not the pre- the will to prepare to win." Right. Yeah. And so, like, when you're like, like she is, when you're more than prepared, as far as the actual knowledge of it. Now, if I if if I would have thought, if I would have thought, hey, you really don't know your stuff, like. Okay, that's a reason. That's a whole different reason to get nervous, right? Yeah. And in this case, when I'm like, you know your stuff. Like, if you're worried about yeah. just saying it out there in front of people, so like, what? You're right. So you're what? Right. This, you're right. Just this put part it out there. is easy. Yes. This part is easy. You're stating your beliefs. Like, so you put it in that context. You stated your beliefs. You're stating your beliefs. That's all you're doing. That's it. You believe in them, right? right? There's no right or wrong answer. Yes, you believe in them, right? Yeah, then go. That's it. Go with it. So, here we are. Deep, heavy show today. Yeah, we kind of started off really, really strong there. So, we've got some bills to pay. Local Legends, greatest logo in the game. Visit them. Tom and Q, promo code will get you 15% off. Awesome stuff. I'm going to hit, I keep saying this, but I haven't done it yet, mainly because of everything else. But I got to hit him up for some stuff. I've got some really cool ideas. So, Ryan, I'll be be coming at you. Um, White Oak Productions. Bringing Weddings. us our, our music wheel, yes. right? You know, they're they're masters, they're masters of the of the music. Yes, they're the moms of music, right? <laughs> masters and of music. Masters of music. <laughs> Tommy, you like that man? So, <laughs> so we kind of go down that path, but um, yeah, hit them up. Look them up on uh, Facebook if you've got parties, weddings. You know, it's kind of getting into uh, it's kind of the fall. So people that get married in the fall inside great great group of guys i could put that together for you fantastic um fretboard brewery i'm sure they've got some crazy pumpkin spice beer out there right what? now yep not me they and, and they probably have they probably have the apple the angry apple the angry apple stuff out there too so visit them and then most importantly the toby suggs group great guys um they give great effort they're smart they give great results they're handsome um, they look good. Charming personalities. Charming personalities. Always, always knowledgeable. Um, work hard. Travel. I mean, I could go on and on about these guys. Yeah. yeah. So hit them up too. They enjoy lunch together. Yes. <laughs> they enjoy lunch with friends, past. Yeah, they're they're. So high character guys. You know, we kind of introduced this stat a few weeks ago. Okay, and I'm going to go to the computer, and I'm going to pull it up. Oh, yeah, so, I'm excited. Yeah, so we, we've got, um, we've kind of hit. Back in the day, that song's stuck in my head. Over the last, we can play something else, let's do it. The, um, you've got the you've got the numbers, right? So you, yeah, I can pull them 90, up. 91. 91. Ooh, right. I like that. Country. 91 right. country. Number 15. 15. Is that like Doug Supernall? Yeah, it's not George Strait. He was he ninety. Was. He never was in fifteen. <laughs> never. No. So we basically have taken our show, and it's always kind of been converted to a YouTube show. Um, recently, kind of back in the end of August, September, we've taken this show and put it in podcast form, so you can find it pretty much anywhere you go get podcasts. Uh, my favorite is Spotify, um, Apple, iTunes. Um, some people, I think, even listen to it on their Alexas and their i and their whatever your at home device is. So the last few weeks, we have been Alexa play Lori Morgan. We both walk. Oh, I was really hoping for Doug Supernall. <laughs> so <laughs> great. So we've been giving these podcast stats, and I looked them up before you got here. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the computer. And I'll give the updated stats. Yeah, well, in real time, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I was I was pretty pumped this morning to uh, to hear some of those. We're, we're, we're growing. So, well, so one of the one of the jokes that we had when we first started this is, let's just become popular. <laughs> How do we just be popular? We just want to be popular. We just want to be popular. We want to. <laughs> We want to be the prettiest girl at the ball. That's yes. It, right? So we're working on our popularity. So, okay. So recapping 
our first show that we have out there from September 17th, we talked about homecoming, right? That hasn't yep. changed. Still five people have downloaded. Thank you, five people. Um, One of those was from Germany. Then we talked about pumpkin spice, okay? And, and fall and the changing of the seasons was the following week. Pumpkin spice inferior to apple. Have to add that in there. <laughs> and then, and that, that's at eight, so that really didn't change either. And we should write these numbers down just to see, right? Just out of curiosity to see where we're at. You know, I'm a, I'm a stats guy. I'd like to have a spreadsheet. So 917 was five, nine, 24, eight. Okay, I don't remember what last week's was. I can look it up, but we did a show on perspective. Okay. And it's kind of taken over a lot of the show and the theme and everything that kind of goes with it. So I'm gonna click on the stats of Perspective. Perspective. Word right. is getting out. So, as of Friday, before last week, here's the stat. We had five people had looked at perspective. Five looking at perspective. Okay. Since our show last week, we have added... 21 downloads of our take on perspective okay now that all, all i see what's going on in the background is like whoa these guys are intelligent i want to hear more <laughs> man what a take it's the great thing about about podcasts is <laughs> like you can download that anytime yes right even though we do this show live so you may miss when we talk about sports and we talk about different things like you may miss some of our opinions on current events and things that are happening sure you know we might be a little bit behind the times maybe we're the swami and predicting things happen right so you can do your checks and balances there perspective stands the test Correct. of time though so episode details on our on that will tell us once i get to it Here we go. So, where are these 26 people listening from? Where are they downloading from? Obviously, we're in Cincinnati, Ohio. You know, um, we the large majority is Cincinnati, Ohio, or in the surrounding areas, right? Yeah, that, yep. So, but we've also reached <clears throat> Los Angeles, California. Woo! We've reached Charlotte, North Carolina. Woo! Home of, woo! The Nature Bowl. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Great pronunciation there, Louisville. Louisville. Not Louisville. Not, yeah, not Louisville. Yeah. Louisville. 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 Yeah. Uh, Dayton, Ohio. And again, our good friend from Mumbai, Mahasharashta, has gotten our idea of perspective. <laughs> I, I'm going to say... Great pronunciation there. Yeah, I, I, re I read it exactly <laughs> as Mrs. Miller, first grade reading teacher, taught me how yeah. to. Right, you sound it out. So that's twenty six, right? So now, last week we did a show. Um, those two have kind of so far been some of my favorites, right? Yeah. Um, we did. Did Urban Meyer break the internet? Did Urban break the internet? Okay. So in that one week's time, we have 15 people. So thank you to you 15 people and the additions on Perspective and everybody that's downloaded that. And I'm going to give you... So that was episode 10-7. Yeah, so that was last week. How so many was that? 15. 15. 15. And it do, maybe it doesn't... 15 doesn't seem like it's a lot maybe to somebody else. Like, yeah, when you're up 300%, though, That's exactly a lot, right. I like right? that. I like that a lot. And... and <laughs> Hold that thought because we're... The, the show is growing 300%. We're going to come back to that in a minute because that percentage thing, I've got a perspective on that too. <laughs> so, so now, okay, 15 people. Of those 15 people, where are those 15 people? This is amazing. Obviously, again, Cincinnati and the surrounding areas, yeah. right? Detroit, Michigan. All right. So please, if you are listening into De in Detroit, thank you. And I apologize because I have you guys going 0-17 this year. Good. That means that you have the Bengals beating them yes. this weekend. Yes. 
So, and we'll come, we'll touch on that too, because I got to make a survivor. I game. love Chris Spielman. Look at this. Uh, Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. 36. The, yeah. the, the yes. show. Yes. The Chris Spielman's number. It came up. It's not an now, accident. If you looked up Stanford I believe Jennings in him. and said Stanford Jennings was from the city of Detroit, that would be amazing. We're going to do it. And and I believe in Spielman, and I believe that the, the Lions in the future, while he's in the front office, they will get it figured out, and they will be a, a very competitive because he's he's a winner, he's a competitor, and I think that goes down. And, now, and, and this is a generational thing. So right? Detroit, I believe in you in the future. And this might even be a controversial statement, but I believe that Barry Sanders was the greatest running back of all time. Okay. I know there are arguments, but I I remember watching Barry Sanders do things in a phone booth that were amazing. So <laughs> anyway, so then we've got Dayton, Ohio. Okay, still kind of Cincinnati a little bit. Stanford Jennings born in Somerville, South Carolina. Oh, That's all right, though. Dang, dang, it's dang. still 36. So, our guy from Mumbai, Maharashtra, <laughs> is back. Checked us out, so thank you. Um, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Uh, ooh. Las Cruces, New Mexico. Thank you. And our man from Frankfurt is back. Frankfurt, Germany is back in the fold so please continue to listen because we love those stats you guys in in those different places too i am us i am reach out on our page message us we'd love that we'd love to call you out get you so, by name so is there a way that they can contact us on spotify uh, that i don't know contact us check us out on facebook doing facebook true very true um, so tom and q if you get on facebook tom and q show yeah um you can do that. Check out if you can. You Twitter, can message us on Spotify. That'd be awesome. Instagram, yeah, all of them. All of them. Yeah, uh, we're LinkedIn. All across the board. Yes. Yeah. So um, we'll keep putting that out there. It's just amazing. When I looked at these stats, you know, the increase that we got was phenomenal. So, so again, thank you very much um, so, for yeah, that. I, Hopefully, we're entertaining, and and you guys continue to listen, and, and we give you something. I think, I think we're selling about. ourselves short, man, because when, when I sent out my lunch invite, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap up the year. I've got a few lunches lined up uh, with schedules uh, that, that are coming up. I've got a couple next week um, that, I'm, that I'm excited to, to partake in. Um, but when, when I sent my invite out of, of Let's Have Lunch, it, there was, it was a good response to it, and then I, and I followed up with, a, with a, a post about, you know, it looks like I'm going to Vancouver, Toronto, and, and then – that got more, so now there's Florida, Georgia, another North Carolina, and, and, and it's just neat to, and I, I'm, I'm patting myself on the back here, humbly, but it's it just do good, be good, right? Yeah. And and, and just the, the connections and the people that have inspired you and influenced you, and it's you know, the downloads from all over the place, and it's just how well we're all connected and how much we're all connected and, and it's, it's it's humbling man it's it's really 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 cool it is it's it's awesome that you know the the world nowadays we've talked about you know history and and all those things before but with the connections that you make the world has become a smaller place yeah right and and, and so and, and perspective applies to everyone on the globe not just cincinnati which is amazing and i'm going to play this and then we're going to talk so what, we're going to hit this back what's but, your perspective on stats so hold, hold that okay. thought because i got to get this out for our guy in germany because i believe that germans love this guy okay ready okay alexa play me some david hasselhoff Here's some music by david so germany you are welcome right <laughs> hopefully you enjoy this um so first it, it, when you're david hasselhoff singing singing neil diamond's amazing um not Neil Diamond. Uh, oh, shoot. Who's? Rhinestone Cowboy. Who sings uh, Merle Campbell? All right. Merle. Uh, Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell. Not Merle. Yeah. Merle was the flower Merle guy. Haggard. Yeah. <laughs> we got all names and stuff. Campbell. Earl Glenn Campbell. Not Earl Campbell. <laughs> not the running back. <laughs> so. <laughs> the world love the German listener. Yes. <laughs> the whole. Jake. You know, the world has gotten smaller. And, and I was thinking about this, and I heard somebody say it on TikTok, because that's where I get a lot of my news now. I'll tell you, I got to write this down. Cause, dude, I got so much to say. I got so much to so say. So much to say. So, Stone Cowboy. That was good. And 
So I'm listening to TikTok and there was a mom and she's she's making one of these videos, right? And she basically apologizes to and she was probably our age, like this generation's kids. Because when we grew up, your parents, unless you told them, they had no idea where you were. Zero. They had no way to reach you. You maybe stopped at a payphone. Rumor has it some kids in our generation were like, hey, mom, I'm staying at somebody's house. And then they were staying at somebody else's house, and they didn't stay at each. Who did that? I, I've heard rumors yeah. of kids Who doing did? that back in the day. Who did that? Don't know. So in terms of that and that that leads into a lot of the shenanigans right because you yes. don't have the social media you don't have all that stuff being creativity being put creativity right being put into different trials and tribulations whether it's shenanigans whether it's romance whether whatever it was yep there was no connectivity there to whereas now you got social media. Life 360. Life 360. You can text. You can call. Find my iPhone. You know, you can track pretty much anything. Oh, yeah. Snapchat. Everything it's, brings a location. It's borderline unfair. Yeah. Right? And so I've had these conversations, and I was having this conversation similar with Austin last night as we were kind of driving to football yeah um and and it was just about like man like when we were growing up in the 80s and 90s huh like the things one that we could get away with two the things that took place like you get in the car nowadays like Blake or Austin be like, hey, can you turn on your hotspot? Like, no, like you're going on a trip, like you have to look out the window. <laughs> yes. You know, or hope that you found a good radio station or you had a good cassette tape, right? Yes. The Walkman. Yeah. With the CD, with the disc. Yeah. And so like, it was just, it was just one of those things that kind of took me back and it all kind of spun from this TikTok. It was like, dear today's generation, sorry you didn't grow up in our generation because... And you go even back, go back even further. Hundred percent. I, I we, I've said it. I'll say it. And 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 I I'll love to talk with people from different generations. We had the single greatest childhood in human history. We had it all, man. We 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 had peppered in of, of technology. We had no technology. We had building a ramp so you could jump on it. We had creeks. We had toys just exploded. You know, we weren't playing with metal cars that. I mean, we, we, we had, we were the hybrid generation of, of out with the old, in with the new, and we got to experience all of it. Yeah. We got to see video games at their infant stages to where they are now. Oh, my god! It's like, I remember back when it was mine, and then we had our, our, our parents say, man, the toys you guys have compared to what we have, we had the greatest childhood in human history. So, and that was the conversation I had with Austin. It was... Remembering back when the internet first came out. And it was, here's how it started. You'll get a kick out of this. Here's how it started. So I was listening to the radio, and we're driving, and they they had a, a contest. 21st caller gets two Blue Jackets tickets, right? I like hockey, but like NHL hockey, I've been once, and it's phenomenal. Yes. So I'm like, so I'm like, I've got... My phone, you've seen it, like the holder, right? So yep. I'm at a stop sign. I'm like, I dial the number, send. It's busy. Busy signal. Hang up, dial again. Busy. Kept going. Finally, somebody answers. And he goes, 16th caller. Hangs up. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> and so like, like back. <laughs> I started talking to Austin because growing up, like the differences, like, in today, like I was able to do that right there, right? Yes. And it, I heard the busy signal. It took me back in time because if you called somebody without call waiting, like, and you got the busy signal, your mother, talking to Austin, they never had call waiting. <laughs> so when I would call her, yeah, 
Yeah, we had call waiting. We had three-way calling. Busy, we got busy the sig- invention of so much. Busy signal, and it's so frustrating. And then, like, you give it like five minutes because what telephone conversation can last more than five minutes, right? Yes. Busy still. Okay, who are you talking to? Yeah, who's talking on the phone? And then that transpired to dial-up internet. And when you don't have call waiting and you got dial-up internet, like, you hear the ring. Right, and then you're on. Well, that took up the phone line, so it was busy. Yeah. Then, like, somebody's got to be online. Well, I, on the internet. I can't get, I can't get a hold of them. We were off at, depending on whatever deal the phone company would give out. We would have call waiting until the free trial, or it was right. It got too expensive. It was like get, get rid of it. It was the same way we had cable when we got. Like we might have it for a year or two years, and it was like, ah, oh, we're getting rid of cable. And like, whatever. Um, but like it, then it led to like the dial-up. Like you sit in front of your PlayStation or Xbox or whatever it is, and you immediately and I stream everything here. So like I get frustrated too. Like if I turn on the TV and the internet's down. Yeah. Like Wi-Fi's down. What the crap? Go reset the modem. Yes. How easy. It's so easy that to the point of like if our Wi-Fi's down, I go to my cell phone, hotspot, I'm good. Yeah. You know, but like unlimited data. Just that whole, you know, again, you're kind of talking about history. Yeah. Right? And and maybe that'll be the theme of today is Yes. What we, that we, history we witnessed is. the inception of what we are today yeah. and we also had paper routes. We we we, oh. we walked around the neighborhood cutting people's grass, shoveling driveways, raking leaves. So we had the entrepreneurial mindset of creating our own money to yep. go buy the toys from the store because yeah i mean we had uh, again i'm biased and i'm impartial because i've never lived in another childhood but uh it's just weird and you made me think of that so the great we got to get rid of hasselhoff at this point i mean please you, please <laughs> sorry germany that was one we got to talk in alexa play eddie murphy party all the time yes there we go cecilia loves that song <laughs> Ninety-six, top forty, number five. Next after Eddie. All right. I, I just see this video and he's like, I want to party, party all, all the time, time, party all the time. And then he hits it like, party all the time. <laughs> top forty. <laughs> Who was the uh, the SNL guys that songs? What was the, the year? Ninety-six, top forty, uh, number five. Why am I drawing a blank on the the SNL guys that? Oh, Night at the Roxbury. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like Eddie was like the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> so Billboard Hot 100 singles. All right. All right. Up down, we got it. So, all right, we kind of got sidetracked a little bit there. We paid yeah. our bills. Uh, paid we the talked bills. about podcast stats. Um, our growth and, and our growth, and you, we were talking about percentages, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, getting I was listening to a radio show, and we talked about narratives, right? And how people can you can spin the narrative in a lot of different directions. Yeah, numbers don't lie, they don't tell the full truth, but they don't lie. They don't That's lie, one of my right? favorite quotes. So, the, the guy I was listening to is talking to somebody from up in Cleveland, and they were talking about COVID, and they were talking about COVID and kids. Right, and how the increase. Oh, it's increased. It's increased. Yeah. Like 300%. From very, very few to three. Yeah, yeah it was like That's the guy was like, he's like, he goes, it was like, yeah, he was like, it went from like four to seven. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not doubting science. I'm not doubting the science. I'm just reporting what I heard. <laughs> right. In terms of that. So I don't know how true that actual number is, but that perspective on percentages versus reality and actual numbers boy we can be spend very anything. careful yeah be very careful boy, we can spend anything so all right so last week right jake's listening now but you he had the chili cook off did you yeah, go to it i was able to hope you're still there i did i took uh Paige's boyfriend bailey so bailey thanks for making the trip out with me um jake said uh because they had the dogs there they were doing displays with the dogs yeah. and um it's such a cool event, and and the money they've raised to, to, to buy and train 80 dog, 83 dogs, and, and they're continuing to grow. So that's what the the Jake Haverkamp Foundation is all about: is it, to get 
the Matt Havercamp. Matt, I'm sorry. The Matt Havercamp <laughs> Foundation is all about is is to, you know, contribute to that world and and, and uh, get these canines and, and get them trained and, and get them out in, in, into the working field and and helping our, our police force. Um, so amazing cause. Chile was fantastic. They had, and I, and I know I'm forgetting some, but they had uh, UC Hamilton County, Loveland, um, Cincinnati. Uh, maybe Colerain, I can't remember. But the, but they had six chilies there. Went around. Some were a little different. Got a little creative with it. You know, when 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 um, Bailey and I were eating it, 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 it was similar in, in taste. You know, we our one and two, we were kind of flip a coin over. We yeah. ended up picking the same one, which was Hamilton County. Um, so great job. That chili was fantastic. Spicy. Had enough spice to it to not dominate the flavor. Beanie. It was, not a lot of beans, but there were there were enough. And you know, my only critique is, and I told you again, I'm impartial. I just like things. If they had tomatoes in there, but a little bigger and chunkier, I like that. When you bite into that tomato, it's kind of. Were there any unique chilies in terms of like something that was just different? The, yeah. So that yeah, the first one we ate, and I can't remember who it was for. Um, I think that was Cincinnati. Um, it was almost like a, a like a mamwich. Like a okay. sloppy Joe yeah, type thick. substance, like yeah. I was like, I could put this Maybe. on a bun or nachos, or nachos. Ooh, that would have been fantastic yeah. on nachos. And then we went to the second one, which was like, wow. And I don't know who that was. That's the one I'm forgetting, and it was phenomenal. And then we go to the third one, and it was almost like a pulled pork, shredded kind of. Again, you probably huh. could, like a sloppy Joe. So it was you like could have put it on a on a on a bun. So it wasn't um, like a ground beef. It was more like a like almost like a barbecue beef, shredded yeah, beef. Type yeah, thing. that's interesting. And it it, it was good. Um, Alexa, play "Always Be My Baby" by Mariah Carey. Oh, I that think again, that one won. Five. I think that one won from the judges. And okay. then um, with the the shredded. Yeah, because huh, it had a, it was just different. Yeah, I think it was just different enough. Um, and then, and then the last one we ate was number six, was Hamilton County, and we were both like, "Whoa, whoa, this is." And we were going back and forth between number two and number six. On, I was like, "I don't know." Did and you then, and put it, anything on it? Huh? Did you put anything? No, on it? I, I straight? no, I left it straight because I wanted the authentic taste. So yeah. the way it worked is you drop a. So every every table had a jar, and when you walked in, ten bucks, you get six cups like little yeah shot glasses type things to sample it and there's a bean and a ticket so when you go around whoever you think the winner is drop your bean whoever has the most beans is the winner so i like their scoring system and you got a ticket so whatever chili you wanted to get a bowl of you just give them a ticket they give you a bowl so for the sampling i put nothing in it because i wanted to taste the straight chili right um with the bowl, you know, Bailey got and he threw, I'm done with dairy, so I, I can't really do that. But I did have some crackers and just ate the chili with crackers. And uh, But, yeah, it was it was good. Now, the most important thing that everybody wants to know. I'm getting there. Is Would you have put your bean in my cup? And I'm not saying this because you're here. Probably. Like, your chili was good, man. It... it yeah. Count me in, Jake. Probably. So next year, we got to add Tom and Q to the chili cook-off if we can. And I don't know. I'll make that happen. So, something we got to do because it's all, everyone that brings their chili is is, is a Did you a give that? Did you give him the $100, the donation? I did. Awesome. Walked in and, and Shelly Haskamp, her brother Matt Haskamp, yeah. uh, went to school with. Um, she was working See, the another door. See, another thing. The Talby Sun Group. You know what else they're good at? Keeping their word. Yeah. yeah. So I, I walked in. <laughs> Said, here's a hundred bucks for the next ten people to walk in the door. You know, I want to make sure that they're they're taken care of, and hopefully they took that ten bucks they saved and either paid it forward or, you know, I I, I didn't wear it. I wear it next week, but I, I bought a a a, a t shirt for the Matt Havercamp yeah uh, foundation, and it's got a dog, and it says the nose nose. So creative. I like it. Um, so so yeah, uh, your opinion is Tom's special recipe chili chili. Would have won. Yes. That's all I need. Yes. That's you, all I need. You, you you would have been. So, again, with the one that did win, uh, it was delicious. Yeah. But when Bailey and I were walking around, we're like, you know, when we do this, we have to. So, so the second one raised the bar. I said, this is a chili. When I think chili, this is this wasn't 
But that was your perspective, as, your so, interpretation. Yes. So this isn't really a, what I, I don't know. It's like a, a creative meal, but it's not chili. Yeah, it's delicious. It's yes. just not worth. It's not worthy of my bean. Right. right. So yeah, so yeah, you, you were right there in, in the conversation of those two, and it's one of those ones where I would have gone back, like, yeah, bean. I, mean, I probably because <laughs> yours was. I feel good about that. I, I could have kept. I could have sat here and ate multiple bowls of yours, and it's one of those things where, for my diet and my discipline of eating smaller portions, your chili would have caused me great conflict. If it were, if a pot of it were here and I could just keep eating it, that's, that's, that's. Well, now I feel, I feel stupid that I put that out there on, somebody's going to take that recipe, show up at these, show up at these chili cook-offs <laughs> and win. <laughs> so that's all right. I've got another ingredient that I didn't tell everybody about. So the joke's on you. So also last week we talked about. In so, the city of Cincinnati, Butler County. I think uh, that was the, the second station. Theirs was fantastic and uh, Hamilton County. So it was, was a good time. And, good, and yeah. Sounds like there was there was great a turnout, crowd, good crowd. Raised some money for a good cause. Eating some chili. Yeah. Weather was good. Jake, when I told Jake that I was bringing uh, Bailey, he said, "Hey man, we got the dogs there. You want me to stash some like weed on them and <laughs> do a do a display with the dog?" And yeah, it's like yes. <laughs> put on put on the giant bite suit. Right. Yes. Well, when they were talking, they said, "You know, they do have some marijuana." taped underneath some of the chairs and we're going to bring the dogs in in a minute and it's like uh, i was looking around the room like when she's done talking how many people are going to look under their chair to see there <laughs> yeah there it is right <laughs> so yeah some of these dogs man and just kind of uh, when, when when they walked in and, and and i think bailey said it best he was like look how athletic that dog looks and, and it's it's Oh, a different, different thing to put in perspective because you, you know, for some people that, that are in that world, they, they see it. But I was just staring at it, and you, you just watch these dogs walk, and, and, and the muscle tone, and the, uh, the discipline of, of them behaving and setting, and, and they're, they're, they're constant observing the crowd, and just ah, oh, it was it was it was neat to see through that lens of such a well-behaved dog that that. And I'm, and I'm not, I don't, I don't own a dog. Yeah, I probably never will. I never have. I'm not a, a big pet guy, but I, I, I do appreciate other people's uh, fascinations, and, and that is definitely one of them. And, and when you get to know dogs, like their personalities, their characters, their, I mean, it's 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 a living instinct that they all have, and it's it's cool people, to watch them walk around. And some of them, people's like, emotions it, towards dogs, I feel like, are really polarizing in regards to like. How they feel towards their specific yeah pet like some of the the the, uh, the police officers would walk in and you know their jackets on the good posture uh walking in and in, in a commanding of the room personality yeah and you look at the dog and it's got the same demeanor as its owner and it's like that's <laughs> that's so neat like this dog just runs this place what's the joke you know uh the pet that looks like it's its owner it, like the the longer that they have the pet, the pet starts looking just like. <laughs> so, Jake, we're going to have to have you guys on because I know you guys do shop with a canine cop. Cool. Uh, around Christmas time. So so let's get the details figured out on that because that's that's getting here, man. We're, we're, we're chugging through October. You know, next we got Thanksgiving and then Christmas. And uh, I think when people take their Halloween decorations down, they normally put up a Christmas tree. I'm already starting to see stuff. Yeah. So, Jake... Whatever we need to do, um, let, let's 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 get that. Let's talk about that because what you guys do, man, it's 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 authentically awesome. Yeah, it's a, and it's a it's a great memorial. It's a great cause, like just a good time. So, I, I've got nine. Yeah, I got 1987. Ooh, number five country music. Ooh, Alexa, play "Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Star" by Merle Haggard. <laughs> See, it all comes full circle. Synchronicities, baby. Yeah. Speak it into existence, right? So, also last week we and, talked. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, the Facebook shutdown, right? And, yeah. And so I haven't seen. I haven't seen anything. This week, since then, um, I, I saw a, a, a Zuckerberg, another whistleblower, coming and, out, and I, I giggled. I was like, what are they going to tell us more about algorithms? Yeah. Get out of here. Like, it's all, yeah. So, 
It's it's a mess. I think we we know what it is. I don't think Facebook lost a whole lot though. Stop censoring. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so no, either. I don't we, think they lost. Anything. Everybody talks the talk. They, they they. So did you watch the Dave Chappelle? I haven't yet. So hold that thought. Don't let's okay. not talk about that because it is on my. It is on my to do list, and I will do that before. Okay. Next week's show. Because okay. I've heard it's really good. So yeah, the the, the Facebook takes so we, jot this down so we remember and it's fresh. But the, my thought on people leaving Facebook is going to be very similar to Chappelle walking away from the Chappelle yeah. show. Yeah, and that'll be. I, I'll I'll follow up on that, and I'll I'll we'll get a full report kind of from both of us next yeah. week, and I'm sure I, I read an article down. on it, and when, it, when I watched it, Jessica and I watched it. She fell asleep. So I finished it, and then we watched it the next day. And 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 I don't think this is spoiler alert, but it is a comedy act. It is a stand-up routine, but there is also an agenda there of a point that he wants to get across, and he does it in a in a very very artful, creative way. But uh, the undertone is, I've got some things that I want to say and get off my chest, and here they are. Boom, and he yeah. drops bombs, and it's kind of cringe funny. Funny, funny. Oh, it's a good point. Funny. Oh, that's, and that's where it goes to people being shut down and censored. Yeah. So even if you disagree, your your response is is it speaks volumes of ooh. And you know your response of ooh means it it touched something and there's some truth in there. So let's, you know, peel the layers of that onion back and get to the center and see if if there's enough truth there. To alter the way things people approach in life, so it's. I mean, he goes, he goes in, I, and one of his lines in there is, "I go hard in the paint." He went hard in the paint. I'll, I'm interested to check it out. You know, we talked, we talked last week too about Urban Meyer. Yeah. Right, and we had some perspective on that. Yeah. We didn't think we'd have another NFL coach to talk about this week, oh. and boy, do we. And this is another one that's, and, and it's, 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 it's the energy of the world, man. It's the energy of people. Because you've got people running, softly running to his defense. Mike Tomlin. Yeah. Nothing but great things to say about him. See, I like, heard. Huh. He was, I, I, I saw Tomlin was disappointed. Yes. Right? Um, what's amazing, here's what's amazing to me. And we talk a lot about, we talked a lot today, a little bit about censorship this week and last. Um. He had to have done something to somebody because yeah, nothing he was sets on a shelf for ten years. He was not being investigated. They were investigating the Washington football the team. Washington football team. He wasn't even employed by the NFL when this stuff came out. Now, does it excuse what he said? No. Is there a statute of limitations on any of this? I think there should be. Um, what he however, said is a hundred percent wrong. It's disgusting. It's terrible. However, but we have to open the minds to because if we go into everyone's past and pull out selective things from everyone's past, yes, but it's tough. At some point, you know, we've talked about. Look, we've we talked can't about talk about forgiveness and then go dig up something from from ten years ago. It's the true. Two you cannot can't. exist. That's that's a very good point. Very good point. However. He was smart enough 10 years ago to, I don't want to say be careful, but like, he's a football coach. And this is not going to strengthen his case. I'm not saying that. Because, right. But, gosh, man, we've been in locker rooms. I can only imagine what an NFL locker room, a college football locker room, you watch UC and their locker room, it's, it's total chaos and nuts. Yeah. Like, those conversations, those are not censored conversations, right? So there's a lot of stuff said that I'm sure is very hurtful, mm -hmm. that I'm sure is very derogatory. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's very racial. I'm sure it's very sexual. I'm sure it's very... There's, there's a lot going on in a locker room, right? Yes. And then people leave the locker room and everything changes. Stays like, in the locker room. Yes, right? And, and so I think there's some of that to that you know mm -hmm. it's whether he's with his boys or whatever he thinks he's safe and he puts these 
feelings or whatever in writing. Again, not that the feeling is right or not that it's wrong. I'm just looking at the pure stupidity of the whole situation. It's like, why would you ever like put any of that in writing? And then you have Correct. then you have pictures apparently from Washington of topless cheerleaders. I'm thinking to myself, like, what in the like what world, what planet yeah. is all this stuff happening on? Have we not learned anything Any- <laughs> on how to treat other human beings and, and respect boundaries? Like I, I You went straight back to like nineteen eighty five. Yes, like you open up so on Facebook when you click on the bottom, it's got the news, you thumb through the news. Once every two weeks, there's a, there's a female teacher sleeping with a 14, 15, yep. 16 year old student. Like, it's every two weeks. It's unbelievable. Have we not learned? Like, is there anybody in this country that has not heard the consequences uh, of sleeping with a student? You're done. Has anyone on this planet not heard the consequences of, of being racist? Right. Or, or, or sexist? Or, or, you know, whatever category you want to go down. Have we not? seen the cause and effects of those sad so, character flaws that, that, that are in people. And, and it's just, again, I may disagree with somebody, but I appreciate them. So we were watching, it was Monday Night Football, which is ironic because he used to be on Monday Night Football. Right. right. And I didn't hear anything about it. And then Adam Schefter, I think it was Adam Schefter. Oh, he says some things too. So he comes on or somebody comes on, one of those guys and said, breaking news, Gruden is resigning for blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And my first gut reaction was like, what the hell? Like, really? Like, really? Like, this is stupid. We've gotten to this point now where it's stupid. And then the more you look into it and the more you hear, and they kept, they, they just kept going, right? So they weren't going to stop digging to find stuff. Somebody had some type of agenda with John Gruden. Alexa, play Green Day, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. <laughs> so somebody had some type of agenda towards yeah. towards him. Yeah. Because you, you're bringing that out. and oh, I, His brother I, was coaching at Washington. That's yeah. probably where some of the stuff synced up. And yeah. so, and then you had Schefter, who I, I, I really felt that was a non-story. I don't know why that was even put out there. What, what did he do? I saw it, but I didn't. So... He would he would write stories or have stories out there, and then there was a couple of them, I guess, that he went to the owner of the Bucks, and basically kind of asked the owner of the Bucks, like, does this sound okay? Like, is this like not? He wasn't trying to be offensive. He uh, so kind of looking for like maybe the Bucks. You know, my my take on it was he was kind of looking for the Bucks owner to maybe steer. It. How, which way do you want this to go? Yeah, We're talking about narrative, right? Yeah, like, how yeah, do you want yeah, this? Yeah. How do you want this to read? I don't have a problem with that. I, I think that's great, and I think that's what, as a society, we need to be at is, is how do I approach this? Because if it's taken out of context, or if it's, it's taken a different way, then I could see this backfiring. Right. So I just want to get, and in, and where it sucks is somebody's like, well, if you even have to ask. Well, it's like, well, hold on a second. Like, but that's there's part also- of growth and understanding different cultures, different com- communities, different beliefs different ideologies, different all of those things, is I have to ask the question of, I need clarity on how I'm going to say this. Don't shut me down because if I even have to ask the right, ask, here's, we haven't made progress. Here's progress. my intention. My intention is for it to not go this way. Yes. It, but if I could see how somebody, if they read this, could take it this way. Yes. So how do you want me to put this and help so it doesn't go... Yes. Left, and right. It goes back as, and this is very small in comparison, but it goes back to the Jacksonville management. This is inexcusable. Right. Don't use that word, because you just excused it. Well, what would have been funny, not funny, funny, ironic is, what if he, what if he didn't resign? What happens? Who? Gruden? Yeah. Oh, he's fired. Think about that. Like, and I heard Mike Mayock talk about it yesterday. I mean, that was the conversation in the office. It had to be. Hey, you can resign. Resign. But then he's never working again. Ever. Anywhere. The only thing, and this, I heard this, too, the only thing missing was Nick Castellanos hitting a home run right smack in the middle of his retire, his <laughs> resi- resignation. Right. You know, the Tom Brenneman. 
yeah, idea, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, or, but so hey, yeah, never working anywhere again. And, and, no. and there's somebody out there going, so I don't feel bad for him. He's got millions. But his his livelihood was well. And then the Bucks took his name down off the Ring of Honor. That yeah. is a, that bothers me. I, yeah, I'm not so bothered by his resignation because. It's a bad look. Someone else commented on that, and it's it's. OJ's still in the NFL Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah, and you've got man, Warren Sapp doesn't have a great rap sheet. You can go down that path with that group. He's still in the Ring of Honor. Yep. Let's honor this guy who beats women, drug deals. Just, just let's let's honor this guy. And, and I'm sure we're, we're probably going to ruffle feathers on this, but bad is bad. To beat a woman, to 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 live that lifestyle and do things, is that worse than a homophobe? I put them both in the same category. Well, and is, is, on, it, is it worse than you know a, a transphobic or or but using, or, or a racist? But going like, down what's, your what's, other, what's the difference? I mean, use your other perspective, right? In, in terms of like. Not bringing stuff up from the past, right? Yeah. And so he's got this, some little bit of racial, little bit of sexist, little bit of homophobe, but he also has the only openly gay player on his football team. Yeah. So I would be very interested to see what Carl Nassib's opinion is on John Gruden. Right. And to me... I would take the opinion of his team and the people around him before... My opinion. Well, before I would take the opinion of the rest of the world. Correct. Because he is a coach of a football team. Correct. That's it. He's a coach of a football team. He's not Buddha. He's not Gandhi. He's not... If his, if his African-American players that he has love him and want him to stick around, if his gay player... Uh, likes him and wants him to stick around. I think, the, man, and I'm, I'm gonna, pro, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go for it. I'm, I'm gonna. I think after watching this and putting this in perspective, I think Dave Chappelle is like, if I would have had spoil, this story, I, don't spoil for this routine. When he spoke up on the racial comments, a lot of people ran to his defense. Once more emails came back, and and he tapped into. The, the 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 homophobic jokes that's when he got canceled not the racist stuff it's yeah. when he crossed over and messed into sexual identity and stuff like that that's when he got shut down one stood alone and the punishment was exactly what you said hey i'm in the locker room with this guy and that's not who he is right once he crossed a different line gruden's done yeah that's it's it's crazy to me. So when you watch Chappelle, watch it with those lenses. So another thing to think about, too, and we've talked about this um, on numerous occasions. We, we played the song. Look at us getting political, talking about hot topics. It's great. It's great. That's, you know... <laughs> Pod and politics. Hey, podcast though, has increased 300%. When, yeah, we, the, the, when we started we're getting, getting popular, <laughs> I, I don't think this is politics. I, I think this is the human heart, man. This is the human heart. This is who we are, and, and we talk about it, and I mention it. We all struggle with this guilt thing. We all struggle with things that we do wrong, and when we see somebody else do wrong, we want to highlight that just to make our wrong not seem as wrong, and that's just the world we live in. So we've talked about this stuff before. And last week, we played the song, um, If the World Had a Front Porch. Yeah. Right? 85. 85 Bears. And I would... Speaking of the greatest football player of all time. <laughs> See, that's oh, where man. I knew we, we could go down that route. That's one of those things where it's like, if we don't have anything to talk about... <laughs> Let's talk about goats. <laughs> yeah. um, what do we got? 85. 85 Hip Hop, number 11. A hip, a hop, a hip to the hop to the hip and it hop and it don't stop. 1985... Hip hop, yeah, song. So, we like I was saying, we played that song, right? And, and it was we were talking about kind of a very similar topic in terms of 
just society and people not talking and people not going down, you know, um, what was the number? 11. The Alexa play It's the Beat by Hollis Crew. I want to listen to Hollis Crew. So, Hollis Queens. Instead of front porch, if you took the words. <laughs> you say it, we play it. <laughs> we, we got some Christmas music going on in the background. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Hey. Oh, is this Christmas time in Hollis Queens? I don't know. This is Run DMC. Uh, <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> turn it up one. Understand me? Yeah, that way, maybe you can hear it in the background. But if you, we played that song last week, right? If the world had a front porch. Yep. Could you replace the word, the words front porch with locker room? If the world had a locker room. Because there are so many relationships and so many things and so many, like, what's the saying? Uh, Six of stones may break my bones, but words... You don't hear that anymore. You don't hear that anymore. No, I know. But in a locker room, if you have if you have thin skin in a locker room, you're in the wrong line of, wrong sport, wrong yeah. line of work. Yeah. Go play, go play golf something individual. But, like... Growing up in a locker room, like it thickens your skin, and you look at some of this stuff, right? Yeah. And it goes back to the participation trophies that people started getting. It was like, right? I played baseball or I played basketball. Yeah, well, you weren't any good. You shouldn't right. get a trophy for just right. participating. You know, they have, you get a varsity letter for playing varsity, whatever, right? Yeah. Or doing something, you know, whatever. You got your letterman's jacket. Yes. Like, to me, I feel like if the world just better understood or treated things like a locker room and let a lot of the stuff roll as opposed to, yeah, it's just it, everybody's so thin-skinned, and I'm just not built that way. Right. Because right. of those locker room experiences, the stuff yeah. that you see, the stuff that you hear. Yeah, and that's, that's opening a lot of perspectives. Um because some of them, some go too far. I mean, they do. You know, as far as some sure. of those locker room situations, they go too far. The hazing goes too far. Things just go too far. There, there's limitations on, on, on a lot of things. But there, there, there is enough is good, but too much is bad, right? It's like, it's like spice to a chili. There's not too much spice in this chili to dominate the flavor. So there's certain environments in locker rooms that it's like, all right, dude, you got your point across. That's far enough. But you know what you this did at that going point? going home today crying. But you know what you did at that point? Somebody stepped up, whether it was that person yes. or not. And, hey, I had enough. And you dealt with it right then. So. And then when you got to school, the next day or Monday or whatever it was, like, you didn't carry over that locker room. No. You dealt with that right then. Yeah. Right up front. We're going to have this out. Right. And this is it. And you didn't see colors. No, And God, you no. didn't see sexuality. God, you didn't no. see any of that stuff. It was no. the only colors you saw were whatever color was on your jersey, your helmet, or right. whatever. That was the only thing. Right. None Perfect. of the other stuff matters. Perfect. There was no politics involved. It was, hey, great game day. Hey, you really suck today. What? Oh, then we're going to fight. Yeah. Hey, your girlfriend's this. What? Hey, your mama. Hey, the, like... We've lost the ability to tell your mama jokes for crying out loud. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my response to every, every time I'm stumped. Like, um, I don't know, your I'm, mom? <laughs> I, I miss, and again, you talked about it, and I think you're right. We grew up in the best time yeah. ever because we had the history and experience of everything that had happened prior. Yeah, we take everything personal now, man. I, I don't know that crazy. we did. So it's tough to, to really compare times, man. So if somebody wrote in 85 and they wrote in 2021 of, of locker room banter and the cause and effects of it, it's 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 different because times were different. We, we were, we were, 
I, it was just different. You know, yeah. I could go on and on about why and why, why, why but it, it was just different, and, and, and the expectations were different. Um, so, it, it, But now, and, and that's where we have to live in, we have to live in the now of, of the locker room banter. And don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating against locker room banter because, uh, again, I, I'm for both sides. And I'm for both extremes because without – um, heat, you can't form steel, right? Without pressure, you can't make a diamond. Without, you know, all those cliche yeah. things, like you need all of those things. And, and, and you look back on people that have prospered in life on crazy uber levels, and, and you talk about how rough their childhood was. You talk about some of them, I used to be bullied. Because of the bullying, it caused me to focus. It caused anger to come out of me. It caused certain qualities to come out of me that I didn't know. You, you look back at your greatest coach of all time. It's probably the more firm coach you've had. Right. Right. You, you look at the greatest boss or manager you had. Man, he was tough on me, but he brought a lot out of me. You know, you, parents, my dad was hard on me, but he brought a lot out of me. My mom was hard, but I brought a lot out of me. My friendships, you know, like when we, we would, I tell the girls all the time, like when we would compete, as best friends in the world like we would hurt each other like we would compete and it was it was hard fouls brutal. it was hard tackles it was hard hits it was aggression and and lee would talk about because i had anger issues when i was a kid and i just overdid it sometimes but see i think that goes back to that locker room mentality. all of that molds and comes out of because of those hard times i'm okay I, I get life, and it goes 100% what you, great at bats at life, right? Hard at bats at life, you know, put you in perspective. And, you know, when you talk to people, and I, I love the interviews when they, you know, this Super Bowl, this this playoff game is the biggest moment in your life. And he's like, <laughs> you know, I grew up in this scenario. I watched my dad die. I watched this happen. Right. Like, this is just a game, right? It is what it is. So, you know, when, and you, when you grow up, and, and I'm not saying that, Every situation needs to be hard. I think there needs to be compassion. I think there needs to be empathy. I think there needs to be, you know, the key to all of it is cooperation. It's, it's, it's massively huge. But at the same time, you need tough, man. You need – remember the game Operation? <laughs> Your steady hand? You felt the anxiety and stress. Right. We need that. Remember the game where you turn the timer and it – and you got to put all the pieces back in yeah. before it pops. Concentration. Like, oh, you're freaking out. You're stressed out. Yeah. If we don't have those little stressors throughout life, when we get stressed in life, we fold like a lawn chair. Did you hear Coach Combs on the microphone this week? I did. What a great speech. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Um, if I quit, then I lied to everybody I ever correct talked to. Every word out of my mouth up to this point is a lie. I mean, he got Can't up there quit. and that's abso- great. Absolutely slayed it. Yep. And you talked about it, like those tough coaches. Like God, he was tough. Haynes was tough. They yes, were tough, tough. But they, but looking at the way he's out there right now, right? I mean, uber successful. From math teacher at Corian High School to defensive coordinator at Ohio State. Greatest, one of the greatest recruiters this place has ever seen. And then he gets knocked down. He had never been knocked down. Yeah. You know, he was always wanted, and he got knocked down. And his perspective on that was, just like you just said, I keep telling these people there's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. And I keep wanting them to get better, right, yeah. to, to deal with it. To do, if I did, if I quit, like you just said, or if I get stuck in that low, yeah. Then I have lied to all of these kids that I've been that that have come in here. I've got to be better than that. I've yep. got to be better than that because I and he understands it. Like I am the role model. If I turn around and talk, no, I'm not, now I'm going to work harder. Yeah. And yes. I'm going to do better. <laughs> yes. And this, so like, and sometimes we get complacent, and the hard times get us focused back in. Correct. Yeah. And so, like, a guy like that, he's going to be okay, but that sucker, that little, whatever, five-minute speech. So, yeah. Blew up. Absolutely blew up. So, kudos to him, clearly, for putting it in perspective. Yes. Yes, it's amazing. Which, which it's great because before the show started, I shared a video with, with uh, Mason Crosby and, and, and McPherson yeah. talking after the game. 
And, and you know, I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm blessed and I love the life that I live and I, lo- I, lo- I love you. I love friends that I have. I, I meet with my pastor every Friday. We talk, we dive in. And, and I had lunch with Aaron Dorfman yesterday. And, and to tell you on air, like, I, I thank you because there's so many things that we have on, thoughts on and they just stay pinned up. And if we don't have that person to just sit and talk to and just let them out, right. even if they're dumb, you're going to laugh at them, but it's still a release. Like, find that person in your life. You know, I've got multiple of those people in my life, and, and you're one of them. So this relationship, it's, it's, it's life-changing because it helps, it, it helps you express things, right? You know, off-air, guys, we talk and we say some things, and sometimes we're like, well, we're not going to go to the air with that. Or it's like, hey, that's a good point. Let's dive yeah. deeper hey, into it. Hey, stop talking about that now. Let's talk about this and keep it <laughs> yeah. fresh when we but, actually and do And there's it. so many of those things. And where I'm going with that is as soon as Mason Crosby missed his third kick, I thought, man, that guy has nobody to go to the sideline and talk to. He's not going to go talk to an offensive tackle about right. what he's going through. He's not talking to his quarterback. He's not talking to a special teams coach. He has no one that does apples to apples what he does. The only person that does exactly what he does is on the other sideline. And he's going through the same thing. And those two guys were having the exact same experience, whether it's, it's a mechanical thing, a mental thing. And they're struggling with it, and neither one of them – you can't talk to a punter about kicking field goals because it's, it's just different. It's right. different enough that they're, they're – so after the game, when those two huddled up, it was neat to see because that was the first time they had someone to talk to that was compatible with what they were going through. So find that person in your life. Have that person in your life. Just listen. Be that listener in somebody else's life. Um, it, we'll, it's We'll come back to that. Powerful. We'll come back to that because that's a way better perspective, narrative – Interpretation than what Die Hard Bangle. <laughs> so we got the, the Peyton Manning idiot kicker. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So Alexa, play. Oh, what's the song? Oh, crap. I, I, I've lost my. I've lost my train of thought. So that was my take on the I've, idiot kickers. I've lost my ship of thought. Um, dang on it. What is the song? Alexa, play. I got my I got my mind set on you. I love this song. Got my mind set on you by George Harrison. Okay, yes. so the reason I played this. I got my mind set so, on you. And this is this is what I thought of. This and I, I, re- I, I literally real. literally just thought of this. So I, I got a great game that I play Hold every on, time let, they say you. You got to put a Q in there. Let me finish this, okay? Because if not, I'll forget it. So we talked about Def Leppard and not knowing the lyrics, <laughs> yeah. right? But you would still sing. Yes. So I remember when this song came up. You thought it said, I got my mind set on cue. No, I got my mind, I got my sail set on you. So when we were, where we're going oh, next, all right. immediately I thought of this song. Yeah. Ships, sailing, not sailing. <laughs> Right? I got my mind sail on you. Like that was, uh, growing up, that was exactly, like, like I remember I would be, I'd be like screaming this at the top of my lungs. I'm like, now as I've gotten older and you can actually hear, it's like, <laughs> that's oh, great. My sail doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but yeah. my mind, yeah, yeah, it, does. it, it makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> I got my, mind, my sail is on you. It's like a sailboat. Yeah, it so, makes perfect sense. So we've got a lot going on in this country as far as the supply chain and ships being stuck out in the ocean and just hovering out there right just floating out there in the sea with our local legends gear with our white oak production shirts with our fretboard beer right and they are li- you didn't really you hadn't heard I had of no it clue it's, it's it was on this tv a minute ago you show me the the maps of, you, of all the ships and it's thousands of ships just stuck. floating yes out there waiting so the supply chain, if you've seen it, if you've ordered anything, like the reason being is all that stuff's here. Like we're not letting them in for whatever reason. And the interpretation is there's not enough people, long shipment, that can unload the material. Yeah. Which there's multiple reasons, whatever, for it. You could say it was COVID. You could say it was You know, people not willing to do that type of work. I mean, you're seeing it across the board. You're seeing it in the restaurant industry. 
you're seeing it in industrial industries kind of two words together at the same time um, we're seeing it with bus drivers we're seeing it now we're seeing it long shipmen like there are higher there are people hiring all across the country yes you see the signs everywhere yes why aren't people working? I saw a video of a little kid, and he sang the ABCs of You Can Do Anything. It's cool. I never heard the song. I thought it was cool. I watched it. Dad's in the background. And I can't remember the professions, but the kid would basically say A, and he would say a profession that started with A, say you can do this. B, profession started with B, C, and so on. And he went through the entire alphabet of different professions, and you can be anyone that you choose to be. Like, what a great message. Love it. Not one trade was mentioned. Never mentions carpenter, never mentions plumber, never mentions electrician, never mentions shipping, never mentions roofer, never mentions H. No trade was mentioned, which all of these professions desperately need someone in the trades because if you're a scientist, you need a building. Who's going to build that building? People in the trades, yeah. plumbers, electricians, HVAC guys, contractors, roofing guys. And where I'm going with all that is the reason we don't have anybody to unload ships or drive trucks and deliver lumber, which lumber yards have plenty of, is we don't glorify, it's why Labor Day is becoming my favorite holiday, we don't glorify the people that truly, truly, truly make this country Stay run. On that. And, it, and it, it's disheartening and it's frustrating that, that we've gone through a generation of go to college, get an education, and become a lawyer, a doctor, a this, a... a be a, um, a software guy, be a computer guy, you know, learn how to program software, do this, do that. Nobody says, Alexa, play 40 hour week by Alabama. Great song. Nobody says, yeah, pick up it. a freaking hammer and screwdriver. I, I was just talking to a guy the other day who, who was high school dropout, passionate, loved cars, his mechanic, started a shop, he grew, he grew, started getting insurance claims and started doing insurance. He grew to the 23rd largest collision center in the country. The guy's sitting on millions. Millions. He collects exotic cars. He's got 17 exotic cars. High school dropout, dude. It's a mechanic. Loved to repair cars. That was his passion. He went all in on it. And now you remember the movie Gone in 60 Seconds? Yeah. You know the, the, the car, the, the unicorn? Okay. They made five of them. One of them burned up. Him and his business partner owned two of them. He was offered a million dollars for the car, and he was like, no, I'm good. Because... I can't replace that. Right. Like, it's gone out of my... I own one of four. I can't replace anything for a million dollars, <laughs> short of my kids. <laughs> and that's only because of a surgery. <laughs> I'm just, so, kid, kids, I'm just kidding. So, but that is... Why? 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 And, 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 and it wasn't an easy route for the guy. And it ended up being a, like almost a 40-minute conversation of, of, of kind of that context of what's so bad about about you know be, be, become an attorney okay who's fixing my car let's look down on that guy right that guy keeps me on the freaking road right L love that guy appreciate that guy tip that guy take care of that guy i got a, a, a guy that's our age he said i can name my price for an auto body shop i want to work into because all the older guys that that loved this they're, they're fading out getting too old and the younger generation wants nothing to do with it i'm in a pocket right now because we grew up in the greatest generation ever or they had the greatest childhood ever, I can name my price as a mechanic because I have no competition. Yeah. And it's like, ah. Oh. So I, yeah, it, I don't know. Not against college, not for college. Whatever your passion is, yeah, attack it. If, if college is the path to get you there, And go. guess what? Sometimes you go to college and you find out that that wasn't what you necessarily needed right. anyway. My only advice to Paige when she went is network your face off. Here's what I'll say. And I tell this to my kids all the time, my 17, 18 year old team is they're kind of going through the recruiting cycle, right? Get as many of these life experiences as you can. Oh, yeah. Because at some point, those life experiences are going to change. Yep. And you're going to fall back on those, again, talking history, right? You're going to fall back on those life experiences, that history that you had to get you forward in what you actually end up doing. Right. 100%. It, I, I went to college for five years. I've got a bachelor's degree. I'm in a job that I didn't necessarily need it. Now, on the flip side of that, like, I wouldn't be 
good at my job right. if I didn't have those experiences. Yeah, 100%. So, so the degree is a piece of paper. Yes. The experiences yes. are way more important than the actual degree itself. So whatever you're doing in life, here's our life advice session. Be so confident and competent at that that you can walk away and do anything else you want to do. Yeah. Like I've got this so mastered and so figured out that I understand like, that everything is cause and effect and I'm going to step into a, yeah, I've, I've changed my profession a few times. But when I was in a profession, I was all in. So I don't yeah. see myself doing this for the rest of my life, but man, I'm fascinated with what I'm currently doing. And nobody knows what the future is going to bring. <laughs> right. And then I, I dove into another line of work and I, I was I was obsessed with it, fascinated with it. And then I changed and get out. And it's just because of who you are today, because of who everybody is today is the body of work that led them there. And and if you take it so I'll take, half-heartedly. I'll take that a step further and kind of wrap our whole show around that whole idea. Maybe if we just started judging people on their body of work, their character, <laughs> this world might just actually be a better place. Yeah. As opposed to the woke people or whatever it is that I just saw coming across, the Rolling Stones are going to stop performing the song Brown Sugar because somebody's offended by that. I'm sure when whoever wrote it, I don't know the answer to that, when they wrote that song, Brown Sugar, offending somebody was not no. in the cards. So, or it was. <laughs> it was. I, I don't know the lyrics. I've never. And I don't know the guy who wrote it. So maybe it was, maybe, <laughs> but I, I'm only assuming, right? You know yeah. what happens when you assume. But that was not the intent. The intent right. was to sell records. The intent was to entertain people. Yes. It's, it's like comedian. So, why Wayans does it take said Chappelle's show freed comedians? All the f- comedians have it probably the worst. I, I, I watched a, a a comedian's documentary, and it's a guy that I like a lot now. It's, it's, he's off colored. He's vulgar. He's he's, he's his name's Tim. Andrew Schultz, but he's freaking hilarious. Um, he he did a tour over in, in Germany, and and they don't really have stand up comedians over there. They're all like underground, low key, because of the restrictions of of speech that they have in that country. And it's like, how fortunate are we that we can have Richard Pryor? How fortunate are we that we can have um, Eddie Murphy? And 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 uh, I'm thinking of he did the movie Back to School. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Rodney Dangerfield. Like, how uh, George Carlin? Are you kidding? Jerry me? Jerry Seinfeld. If George Carlin were alive today, the inconsistencies, huh. and the hypocrisies on our, in, in our society. Richard Pryor was that way. Yes, like he would just like George Carlin. I mean, he would get like oh, it's just. But we were fortunate enough to have the extreme opposite opinion See, I think, to keep our opinion in check. I think comedians are some of the brightest people on the planet. Yeah. Oh, and easy. They're, they're so... They pick up on things and their perspective on things and their take on things to be able to put it out there. And everybody goes, huh. And like, I, goes- I find those com- the comedians that, that hit a nerve... Yeah. are usually the best kind because when they hit the nerve it's usually something that's been like oh yeah that is right yeah huh, that's our, and it's more laugh out of irony than it is and none of them lived easy lives that you don't get quick-witted and sharp and, and refined and calloused in life by living easy lives so i was listening to a radio show um and it was i can't remember it i want to say it was dana carvey he was interviewing dana carvey and but and he was talking about jerry seinfeld and himself he was like like this woke group, like they literally have tried to delete, cancel comedy. Yeah. Like we would go to, and colleges are the worst because they're these free thinkers, right? And so they would go to do a show and basically they would have to hand their set list off to... Uh, to be reviewed before they could take it on the stage. Yeah. Man. And be like, and no, I'm not going to do it. So it got to the point where Dana Carvey and Jerry Seinfeld said, I'm not playing... I'm not playing colleges anymore. It's not like, it, and those two guys don't need the money. Right. It, it, no, they right. do this type of stuff. Again, probably like we talked about, like it's a release. It's probably, it's a lot of fun. You know, they're the most popular person. So uh, going back to, that's, that's a great point you touched on there. Cause like I have you to bounce thoughts off of yeah. because mm-hmm. I live first. my life and, and right. And it's these comedians, like you hear, I watched this comedian say this on stage, and I thought, wow, 
I can do that. So the thing I learned this week is called a mirror neuron. Okay. So it's a mirror that you look into for a reflection neuron. And it, and it's, so when a little kid I watch, look in and it's like mirror moron. <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> so when a little kid, it put it, a quick synopsis of it, it's, it's like a two-year-old watches you fall. What do they do? They laugh. It's comedy, right? Because their brain hasn't formed what the consequences of falling is. They don't understand hurt. When you see an adult fall, your first instinct is, ooh, because you know what it feels like to fall. So your mirror, mirror neuron, when it sees it happen, it doesn't comprehend if it's happening to you or someone else. It just sees it happen. And it's that's why we respond to what we see. Ooh, I feel for him. Whether it's, it's someone who surprise their kid and walks into a room the kid hasn't seen their dad in six months because he's on military leave and the kid cries when we see that our mirror neuron doesn't know if that's happening to us or them interesting so it, it affects our body and our emotions and it's like ah oh, we know we process it we can come but little kids that it hasn't formed yet because they don't experience life right so it's such a fascinating thing on how this mirror neuron works and and how you can watch something and when you can't compute if it's happening to you or someone else, wouldn't that help you say, hey, maybe if I watched or listened to better things, my body, I could train my body like, hey, this is all, all this good stuff that I'm watching. I'm fooling my body that it's happening to me. So I'm going to live a better life because I have a more, I mean, we hear people say these things all the time like, well, with my luck, this is going to go right. bad. Right. Well, no, watch something where, where you see, watch a game to where somebody comes back from a deficit. And when you see them over, watch Rudy, right? Someone overcome obstacles. And when you watch Rudy lift it up, it's like, that could be me. Your mirror neuron doesn't know that. So watch things, educate yourself on things, learn things that are in more of a positive context to where you can train yourself that, hey, good things can happen to me. And that's where years ago in another profession, I went to this place called Happy School. And it makes a lot of sense yeah, what yeah, you yeah, said. Yeah. And it was... I remember you talking about that. And the guy was the guy basically said like get up in the morning first thing you do, you know, it basically instead of turning on the news because the news is always bad news. And he's absolutely right. Yes. I love the news. I'm a huge news fan. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite movies of all time is Anchorman. I just <laughs> like I am stuck that on That could be me. <laughs> I'm stuck on the news. So, it is true though. Like it's kind of that osmosis. Like yeah. hey, like surround and and have you ever stood on a tee in baseball and said, oh, bottom of the knife, two outs. Oh, yeah. And you've lived it in your head? Yeah. You watch it on TV? You live, so, yeah. yes. It's, it's, a, it's three, two, one. Yes. A right? lot, yeah. We've all done it, right? Yep. That's because we, we grew up in a world where we watched success. Yes, and it was the triumph, and it was... Yes. Yeah, you know, and you're absolutely so right. We and, have something in us that translates that into us. And it doesn't know if it's us or that person. Well, that's, that's what happening that's too. what this happy school is like. Hey, get up, read for twenty minutes, something positive. Yeah, ten minutes, whatever. I like a, there weren't cliff notes, so I never ended up doing it anyway. But <laughs> right. but that was his idea, right? Stay away from the news. Like to do all this. Like take a walk. Do something. Do something else. Yeah. To surround yourself with some positive energy. And, and you know, you kind of talk about Kerry Combs and his speech that he had, and hundred percent positive energy. That was his. That was his mission. That was his thing. If I can go out there, deal with the ups and downs, I'm in a down right now, but still bring the positive energy. That's a way better message than going the other route. Hundred percent. Right. And we talk about football. Here we are. We're in the sports section. Oh yeah. We kind of go down the path. It was a heavy show. Yeah, it was good. So, Alexa, play Yakety Sax. I don't even know this. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. This is how I felt on Sunday watching the Packers beat the Bengals. Yeah. You had the Bengals come all the way back to tie it. All right, great. They get the ball in overtime. They get it down there to their rookie kicker who hasn't missed a field goal all year. Huge leg. Misses the field goal. Not to mention, right before overtime, one of the best kickers in the game. Dude, it was a 50-yard field goal. 51-yard field goal, and he hit the flag at the top I of know. the freaking pole. Are you kidding me? Mason Crosby hasn't missed a field goal all year. Hall of Famer. Misses not one, not two, but three kicks. <laughs> Bengals rookie kicker. They had three chances to win the game. 
The Packers had five. And nobody, I mean, we were sitting at Hobner. I took heat last year in the playoffs because I said uh, Aaron Rodgers was not a clutch quarterback. And I took a lot of heat. And it's like, exhibit A. (laughs) And it's just frustrating because you're watching it. We're sitting at Hobner and there's a group of people like we're watching the game. And then it's like, I know there was a baseball game going on. And (laughs) you hear the, like, ah, like the the air come out of the balloon, right? Like, oh, the Packers, like, they had just scored to tie it. Aaron Rodgers got, like, 26 seconds to go all the way down the field and get in field goal range. Yes. And he does. And it's like, oh. And then the kicker gets out there, and the kicker kicks, and he goes, like, everything just blows up, right? And then they go to overtime. And then the Bengals get it all the way down to try to kick the – it's like, yeah! And then the Packers. And it's like, Yeah! Ugh. And everything is just so like it's like, and then finally he got to the point. It's like, all right, he's got to make one of these, right? Right. And Crosby made it, and it's like it was so frustrating as a Bengals fan to watch, and sit there and be like you could be four and one, and everybody's making this. Ju- and I'm a huge Bengals fan. I know you're you're not really, but everybody's making this huge deal in the local media about. Oh, the Bengals have arrived. They're up here in the power rankings. They they almost beat the Green Bay Pack, the giant Green Bay Pack. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, this is such garbage. Yeah. Like I'm a day to day person more so than that. I mean, I am so far beyond moral victories, especially when it comes to the Bengals. The Bengals. The Bengals are the like, Bengals until proven otherwise. There is no moral victories here. Like this is right. you had an opportunity to go four and one three times. Yeah. I don't care who you're playing against. That's why when we were talking about them playing Detroit, like I've got survivor picks that I gotta make, and I, <laughs> and my one of my like one of my rules was okay if I haven't used the team playing against Detroit, that's my survivor pick. Yeah. Right. And so I see the Bengals going there in a game that they should win. Yeah. I don't think they're a bad football team, but that is that. For the Bengals or the Lions. The Bengals. Okay. The Lions are a bad football game. <laughs> but that doubt that creeps into my head of they just lost to the Packers, I don't have that feeling of, like, oh, they're going to bounce back hungry. No, I've never had that feeling like, right. with, with the Bengals. Like, no. No, this is where it spirals out of control. Like, they lost a game they should have won to the Packers. They're going to go to Detroit. They're going to get. They're going to lose by 30. The quarterback has a throat contusion. Yes. A throat contusion. I used to give my brother throat contusions all the time. I'd get him in a camel clutch. It was my move. I'd get him in a camel clutch, and then he's sitting up back here, and then I karate chop his Adam's apple. You know that lump in your throat that you get when you got hit? Like, I'm like, get over it. My brother got over 30 of those one time. Contusion. Yes. Like you karate chop the Adam's apple, takes him right out. I mean, Randy Savage dropped a bell on Ricky the Dragon Steamboat yes. and crushed his larynx, right? Guess what happened? Ricky the Dragon Steamboat came back, they wrestled in WrestleMania 3, and they put on the greatest match of all time. And he chopped you in the throat. <laughs> so, oh, so get over your throat contusion, Joe. <laughs> I don't want to hear throat contusion. I don't want to hear. All I know is you got an idiot kicker out here messing it up for the rest of the group. Make your kicks. You got one job. One job. One job. You spend all week long doing your leg curls, doing your squats, doing your throwbacks, all these different things, and you get a chance to kick the ball as far as you can between a 30-foot hole. Stop missing those kicks. Oh, this is great. Stop missing those kicks. One job. Finkel and Einhorn. Einhorn yes. and Finkel. If Finkel Justin and Tucker can make a 67-yard field goal with the pressure on and no time left on the clock, yes. I'll be damned if Crosby and or Evan McPherson can't make one of five. 20 yards less or 17 yards less. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, yes, you could sit here and talk about your perspective and Crosby talking to McPherson all you want. I don't care. That is a clown show sitting in the middle of the field of two guys that are having nothing but a daggone pity party out there. Right. You're going to be great someday. Yeah, I bet you will. You, well, you weren't today. You both sucked today. And somebody got the opportunity, oh, great got take. one more opportunity than the other. Four and one is way better than freaking three and two. 
in this division where it's very winnable with a bad Steelers team. Yes. A Browns team that can't find a way to get the ball to Odell Beckham Jr. You got a bad quarterback in Cleveland and Baker Mayfield with a bang shoulder. Yeah. To me, you got Lamar Jackson. <clears throat> They're figuring out a way to win. But no, they, and they will. They, they are. They are. I have a ton yeah. of respect for for the Ravens and for uh, right. for Come, John Harbaugh. All right. All right. No, I, I've always have. I've okay. never hated. I wear my Terrell Suggs jersey. Next I've never hated show. the Ravens unless they're playing the Bengals. The Browns hate them. Pittsburgh, way more hatred than yeah, Cleveland. Even despise. Baltimore never real like I. Other than the time, but it wasn't even right. Like it wasn't even right when you had Ray Lewis against Achilles Smith. Like it just wasn't right. <laughs> right. Like at the time, I was like, man, this like. Come on, let's go. And then, you know, as you get older, your life experiences, yeah. right? And you're like, okay, well, we didn't stand a chance anyway. Right. So, like, it doesn't bother me. But you look at, like, what they've got now. Like, I want to I, figure like, it out. What are we doing, like, figure it out? Yeah. Figure yeah. It out. So, the Ravens. Figure your you know, contusion out. I want them to figure lose. this kicking thing out, which you've been doing. Do you know the move I'm talking about? <clears throat> camel clutch. Yeah, 100%. Right? Yeah. So, uh, pic- Iron Chic. Picture the camel clutch. You put your arms up. Your arms right. are here. Your head's yeah. up here. Hold it back here. Yeah. Right there. Right in the Adam's apple. Yes. Did that to my brother several times. He's not listening yet, but it, he'll probably, if he was, he'd probably fill you in. Um, yeah. That's a tough But I'm sure he talk, remembers Who he is today, he can look back and say thanks to my brother yeah. for all of the hard Oh, time. I kicked the crap out of him. <laughs> I absolutely kicked the crap. But I am five years older than him. But, you know, he's probably in a little bit better shape than I am. He did an right. Ironman, one of those. Uh, really? Yeah, it looks really good. Looks wow. really good. All yeah, right. So he's, no, he's doing a good job. So. Keep so up your perspective on the kickers, my perspective on the kicker, the truth, and that's life. No, I told you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so I always say the truth is somewhere in the middle. It's not no, 50-50. No. Sometimes it's 90-10, right? <laughs> so it, it, the truth is over here. So, all right, so let's keep going on this bad news, right? Bad news. So for the last few bad weeks, news bangles. we have been all over the UMass Minutemen. The <sighs> last six weeks. Yeah. And I had an epiphany last week. That said, not only is UMass going to beat UConn, but they're going to go over. They're going to score a lot yeah. of points. And I said, be careful. It's two bad football teams. We don't know. And we didn't know. I didn't listen. Because it's two bad football teams. And it was, <clears throat> I believe there was 10, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, 10 consecutive punted possessions so they played the game between the 40s yes that is awful awful football let's see possession by possession we've got punt touchdown touchdown punt field goal punt 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 interception (laughs) missed field goal field goal punt downs as good as a punt um missed field goal Man, there was freaking comedy in this kicking game too. It's field kickers goal. had a rough week this Interception, week. Interception, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, fumble, punt, downs, end of game. Punt, 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 punt. And I'm a defensive guy. I think that made that perfectly clear. So what is better way to pick this up than to play the number four song from 2003, Alexa, play You're Beautiful by James Blunt? <laughs> so explicit. By James Blunt on Amazon. Explicit. Alexa, stop. I think he does slip one word in there. Alexa, play. Okay. So UMass is taking the week off to prepare for Florida State on the 23rd. That's a bad football team. Both are bad. Both of them are bad. But 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 you're you're like upper echelon bad versus bad. Just bad, bad. Bad of the bad. So (laughs) going backwards, only because I I, now I know this song. Can you picture Evan McPherson and Mason Crosby at midfield? It's this right here. This is what this, this is going on at midfield. It's like a meme. That is the 100% accurate perspective of that game. You're beautiful. No, no, no. no you're, you're beautiful. <laughs> no, you're beautiful. That's it. This is that them sitting at the 50-yard line. Saying goodbye to each other. You're beautiful. <laughs> You're going to be great. You're beautiful. Synchronicities, right? <laughs> Hit it right on the head. 
That's it. Uh, yeah. You're beautiful. So, needless to say, what are we going to do about the UMass Minuteman? We keep going back and forth. I talked this out of the... Have we tried the under? We have not. Okay, so let's... I'm, I keep laughing at this. Um, I used to hate Florida State football because I felt they always ran up the score on people. And I think that's still in their blood. So, I, I mean, again, we're two weeks away, so we don't have them this week. We can take a, a week off of UMass. No, no. Oh, yeah. So, we, oh, they, they don't play. We, we okay. have to take a week yeah. off of UMass. So, um, they, they have no line out on that game in two weeks. So, so we'll, take, we'll take a little respite on UMass. Regather. Recharge our batteries. UConn plays Yale. No, I'm not touching that with the 10 football. <laughs> so, speaking of things not to touch... Since we can't do anything with UMass because they're off this week, yes, uh, I, I think we'll, we'll we'll just give it a week off and let us recalibrate our approach to how we want to talk about UMass football. Yeah, um, stay away from the Mac, dude. Just stay away the from Mac. the Mac. So, okay, so that's I love wrong. defense. I hate offense, but for my guilty pleasures, I watch the Mac championship game every year because it's an absolute score fest. It is an absolute show. They finish like 63 to 60, 70 to 77. It's a, it's a, it's always a shootout, and you just never know what to expect. And it's like it's like so when Mason missed his third field goal, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, oh, he missed. My mirror neuron was activated because I felt it. Right? I didn't know if it was happening to me or him. The same thing happens when I watch Mac football. So that's like, a- oh, he scored. Oh, he missed a tackle. Oh, it's unbelievable to watch. So, so we did stay last away week. From the Mac. We started Tom's big money line parlay, right? And, and I had four teams. I had Arizona State, Toledo, Tennessee, and Western Michigan. All home favorites. Big, big home favorites. I were. Arizona State took care of business. Tennessee took care of business. To your point, the two Mac schools let me down and lost to home. So, here's we're going to change our algorithm. I'm not saying the Mac is bad football. I think the parity is is so great that the gambling, stay away from the Mac. So, I'm going to look up right now what this week's TBMLP is, Tom's Big Money Line Parlay. I'm going to give you four teams – to pick from. And let's do this together. And I felt, I felt I left you hanging. I should have given you the Mac advice last week. Tom, stay away from the Mac, so, man. No, that's okay. It's it this is a this is a ever changing This is how relationships are built. Trust, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So we're gonna figure this out. I let you down, but you didn't give up on I've it. got a couple of rules when it comes <laughs> to the teams that I pick. Okay? okay. So they've gotta be big big favorites, but not too big of favorites. Right? Okay. So, so thirteen to fifteen point? Um, maybe not even that big, but it's a minus, usually a minus 400, which is a big favorite, right. to a minus 600. And then I added, they must be so, at so, home. So what is a minus 400? So on a money line. Okay. Okay, if I bet, if it is a minus 400. Right. Right. That 400 is a good favorite. Basically, for me to bet... To, for me to win money, for me to win forty dollars, four dollars, I got to bet a hundred. Okay. So you right? bet a hundred, you win forty, so you get your hundred back plus forty. Yes. Okay. Right. So you're not making any money off it. Right. And would that be, you know, if I bet a hundred, I would win on a, on a six hundred, I would win sixty. Or no, that, vice versa. Okay. It would go down. Okay. Right. So that's uh, a, a six minus six hundred. It's bigger. Okay. Right. I might have my math screwed up because you kind of caught me off guard with that question. But okay. big favor. Right, so just like picture it as one to four. Ah, all right, all right, all right. right? So I got to bet. That's how it is. I've got to bet. In like order. A, odds of winning are like four hundred to one. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yes. So the opposite. Yes. Right. So in order for me to win one dollar, I got to bet four. Make more sense. Yes. Okay. So what I look for in that is. Minus 400 to 600 at home. But now I'm adding no max schools. Good. Right? So three different things that need to go into it. So while 
You look up the next song. I'm going to go in and take a look at what is going on this week in NCAA football. Oh, four. And I got to wrap this show up too because I got to get. And in the same time, we could talk about the UC Bearcats being the number three ranked team in the country. In the country. And How I crazy think is that? They belong. All right. So the very first one. Get your pencils out. We've got Memphis at home. Minus 425 against Navy. I like it. I like it. Keep going. I'm scrolling down. Okay, I'm going to take this. We've got Oregon at home. Minus 605 versus Cal. Alexa, play Tim McGraw back when. So then we have Virginia at home versus Duke. Ooh. They're that's a minus a tough one. 415. That's a tough one. I like Memphis and Oregon. Iowa at home versus Purdue. They're a minus 450. So there's four teams. Iowa versus who? Purdue. Okay, yeah. Oklahoma. They scare They're me. Minus 525 at TCU, or at home against TCU. Man, that Virginia game scares me. Wisconsin. Hey, this is just an algorithm. Minus 570 at home versus Army. Yeah. And I'm not going to touch the Nevada-Hawaii game. So we've got six teams. So this is a huge six-team money line parlay. Memphis, Oregon, Virginia, Iowa, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. There's no Mac schools in there. None. No Mac schools. So I'm going to roll with it again. I believe in the algorithm. I believe. And you'll see. I'm going to. I'll put. I'll put this back out there for everybody else to take part in. I've kind of told you my secrets. I'm going to go ahead and put two units on it, 10 bucks. Just, again, I do this for you, not for me, right? <laughs> I want you to make money, but also if you have a gambling addiction, go see somebody. Um, if you, or not, or don't, but don't blame me for it. That's my, this is not a perfect science. It's my science, which definitely makes it not perfect. And UMass doesn't play this week, so we don't have to worry about the Minutemen. We'll have to come up with another algorithm to get that done. And I'll tell you here in just a second, as I place this, it's a parlay. It's not bad. 10 to win 20 overall. I'm in. So join me. We can complain together. We can win together. Either way, it's out there. Hopefully you like it. Bearcats are number three. Um, huge, huge, huge. They got a game this week at noon. Yep. Uh, against their best league competition, Central Florida. Um, I'm sure that'll be rocking. It's actually on ABC. Nice. Which is huge. I mean, they're getting a lot of rep, a lot of pub. Yeah. You know, a lot of Cole Rain guys on that defense, too. Deshaun Pace kicking ass right now. Yeah. That guy's, I mean, he's... Doing really well. Darian Beavers, a middle linebacker. That guy coming back, he's making himself a ton of money next year. A ton of money. Like We lost a... Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's going to be interesting. This is a good week of sports. The Bengals versus the Lions. Hopefully they can get a bounce get back. back. Bounce back game. I mean, it's been... Confidence builder. We got pretty deep today. We did. Pretty deep. On time. Ran a little long. But I think it's time we wrap this up. The way it was back then, right? The way it was back then. That's, That's good. a great closing song. Perfect. We talked to, about to that. Everything that the, the body of work that made us who we are today, and and it's 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 all of these life's experiences that that helped you. I do like this. This is crazy synchronicity here that yeah. this song's being played because if you listen to the the lyrics, yep. When a Coke was a Coke before people knew what <laughs> Coke was, right? <laughs> it, it, no, this is exact. This. 
this hits 1980 to 2000 pretty dead on. Yeah. Pretty dead on. So that was good. Good play today. Catch us on all the places you can find podcasts. We've got the live video. It's going to be up on YouTube also. Thank you, everybody, especially you in India, you in Germany, uh, Las Cruces, Los Angeles, New Mexico, um, Carolina, yeah. everywhere. You know, you have those kind of like um, those things that kind of troll around. So see if you can get us get us out there. Let's do it again. Let's see what we can get out there next week. Can we get a new place? Sounds good. Can we top 26? Can we top 15? What can we do? Let's and do what it. can we do to be better? In India, contact us. Frankfurt, Germany. Find a way to get out to us. We'll put you out here. Yes. We'll find a way to get you on. Yes. I don't even know what time it is there, but we'll find a way to get you on. So we got to roll. See you guys. See ya. I got to go. Uh, Rico just.